Hello and welcome to One and All. This is Akash Peri and we are very fortunate to have Dr. Zakir Naik in the studio with us. Dr. Zakir Naik is renowned for his enlightening and convincing presentations on the similarities between major faiths and is world renowned for his attempts in bringing people together on one common platform of peace. This program is in reference to the article on Dr. Zakir Naik that appeared in the Sunday Times on May 30th, 2010 entitled Muslim Preacher of Hate is Let into Britain which was later rehashed by other newspapers of the UK with different headlines such as allowed into UK the preacher who backs bin Laden terror backer can enter UK despite stories ban pledge Islamic extremist Zakir Naik to start to preaching hate terror jive clerics peace talks at Sheffield Arena the question is should a person be considered hate monger for bringing forth verses from different religious scriptures that speak of common terms and similarities most topics of Dr. Zakir Naik's speeches substantiate this fact. Example, similarities between Islam and Christianity, similarities between Hinduism and Islam, concept of God in major religions, etc. They do bridge in the gap between Islam and other religions. It is probably one of the best ways to eradicate the animosity from the hearts of the adherents of various religions of the world, that is, bring them to common terms. We have in studio with us Dr. Zakir Naik. Hello, sir. It's my pleasure to be with you. So I would like to ask you, the Sunday Times quoted in the issue dated May 30th, 2010, that you said Western women are more susceptible to rape by wearing revealing clothes, due to which they call you a misogynist, that is, the one who hates women. Any comments on that? Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahibi ajmain amma bad. As far as the Sunday Times quoting me, saying that Western women are more susceptible to rape because they're revealing clothes and they call me a misogynist. That's a person who hates women. It is ironical. I have given several lectures talking about women's rights. And there's a very famous talk of mine, women's rights in Islam, modernizing or outdated. And women's rights in Islam, protected or subjugated. And because of that, you know, you find large audiences of mine, quite a large percentage are women. And you find that after my talks, there are many non-Muslims accept Islam. And amongst the non-Muslims accepting Islam, more women accept Islam after my talk rather than men. So if this is the case that I hate women, why would these women after my talk accept Islam? This surely shows that what Sunday Times thinks about me is totally the vice versa. Regarding me making the statement, and I didn't make that statement, that Western women are more susceptible to rape because they were revealing clothes. It's correct. But it is not only Western women. Any woman, whether it be Indian woman, whether it be Arab woman, it may be women of any nationality. When they wear revealing clothes, they are susceptible to being molested. They are susceptible to being raped. So I was saying in concern for the Western women, not to speak against them, but I want to see to it that no woman in the world whether it be Indian, Arab or Western, should be molested or should be raped. And I give an example in my talks. And very often and many times I've given this example. That suppose there are two twin sisters who are very beautiful or equally beautiful. And both of them, they are walking down the streets of Bombay or any city in the world. One of them is wearing the Islamic hijab that is complete body covered. The only parts that are seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. And the other twin sister, she is wearing the western clothes, mini skirts or shorts, and this is where they get the statement from. And I say western clothes, mm -hmm. and I say mini skirts or shorts. Mm -hmm. And if both of these twin sisters are walking down the streets of Bombay, mm -hmm. and around the corner, there is a hooligan who is waiting for a catch, mm -hmm. who is going to tease a girl. Mm -hmm. My question to the audience is, that which girl will he tease? Will he tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab, that's complete body cover except the face and hand of the wrist or the girl wearing a mini skirts or short or wearing a top with a deep neck and 100% wherever I've traveled all the audiences have said the girl wearing the western clothes the mini skirts and shorts with the deep neck would be teased rather than the twin sister who's equally beautiful wearing the Islamic hijab so what is wrong? So it is not only talking about Western women, I respect all the women and I tell them that they should not wear revealing clothes irrespective of whether they are Indian, Arabs or whether they are Western because I don't want any woman to be molested or be raped. 
And the irony of it is, the same newspaper, Sunday Times, who speaks against me and calls me a misogynist, a person who hates women, the same newspaper, they published an article more than a year back. And they did a survey and the article came on 9th of March 2009, more than a year back. And they did a survey which was conducted in the UK for the Home Office under the heading Women should be hit for wearing sexy clothing in public. One in seven believe. I'll have to repeat. The heading of the article was Women should be hit for wearing sexy clothing in public. One in seven believe. And it further says the article About a quarter of people believe that wearing sexy or revealing clothing should lead to a woman being held partly responsible for being raped or sexually assaulted. The same newspaper, if it gives this article, if it says that I am a misogynist, then I would say the same time was a misogynist one year back. Aren't they promoting domestic violence? Aren't they speaking against Western women? So why have they double standards? And again, prior to this a few years back, the same newspaper, the Times, they carried another article on the 21st of November 2005, which was titled, Women Still Held to Blame for Rape, which reveals that many people believe that flirting or wearing revealing clothes is an invitation to sexual predators. These inverted commas. I'm quoting from the newspaper. The survey also found that 26% of adults believe that a woman was partially or totally responsible for being raped if she was wearing sexy or revealing clothes. No, I did not use the word sexy because it is too objectionable for me. I only used the word revealing clothes, which is a modest language. Because in my speech, I want to use language which is, you know, acceptable, rather than use words which may be sound a bit obscene. So, just because 26% of the Britishers, in which many a woman, they believe that wearing revealing clothes is inviting the men so that the woman can be raped. So do you mean to say that even these 26% are misogynists and among them there are women? So why these double standards? So what I am saying that people staying in glass houses should not throw stones at others. So this reveals, exposes the double standards of the western media. So when I say it, they feel bad. When 26% of the Britishers say then it is fine, they are not misogynists. When an Indian says, it is misogynist. Why? Why the double standards? That is the reason I care for all the women in the world and I want no woman, whether she be Indian, Arab or British, that they should be teased, they should be molested or they should be raped. Women should be considered respectable for all of us. So another Times quote, which actually got into controversy was, they mentioned the execution of Muslims who changed their faith. So, what's your say on that? Yes, this article also claimed that I call for execution of Muslims who change the faith. It is totally a misquotation. And, yes, what I say, that there are some Muslim scholars who say that if a Muslim changes faith, he should be put to death. But I believe that if a Muslim changes faith to any other religion, the general ruling is not death penalty. And I quote in my answers, once when there was a Muslim who changed his faith and because of his activities and behaviors, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, sallam, he had ordered that the person should be put to death. Later on, Hazrat Umar may Allah be pleased with him, he approached the Prophet and he asked that this person should be pardoned, he should be given protection and the Prophet gave him protection and even pardoned him. This is mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number 3, in the book of Hudud. Hadith number 4345. So based on this Hadith, but natural, death penalty is not a blanket rule for any Muslim who changes his faith to any other religion. So I in fact say that some scholars say that any Muslim who changes his faith should be put to death. But I say this is not the general ruling. And the best example is that I was in Maldives just two weeks back. And in my second lecture, Maldives is a country which has 100% Muslim citizens. I was a guest of the government. I was called by the Ministry of Islamic Affairs. And one questioner, he said that he was born in a Muslim family, his parents were practicing Muslims, but he does not believe in any religion. He is not a Muslim. And then he asked me, what is the ruling for a person like me in Islam? 
Now, I knew this was a mischievous question. And he expected me to say death penalty. I didn't say that. I asked him a counter question. That what do you feel according to your knowledge? He said he had read books on Islam, etc. I asked him, what do you feel according to your knowledge is the penalty for a person like you? He said death penalty. I told him he's wrong. Because Quran says in Surah Bakra chapter 2 verse number 256, like Rafid there is no compulsion in religion through standing out clear from error. So this is not a blanket rule that death penalty should be given to a person who is a Muslim and changes his faith. And after that I gave the answer and I tried to convince him. He was seen speaking to some other audience and he provoked certain audience and as I told you that 100% of the citizens of Maldives are, are Muslims, they started hitting him. And he ran for his life. At that time I stood up and said, I told the audience to calm down. And I again quoted the verse of the Quran, Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 256, saying that like Rafiddin, there is no compulsion religion. And because of that, he was saved. So leave aside giving death penalty. I said we should not even beat him. So these are my views. So how could Sunday Times quote me from where they get this? And they say that I said these statements in some YouTube clip. Now how can they rely on a YouTube clip which can be easily manipulated? And I doubt, I challenge them to show any such statement of mine in Peace TV. What they do, they go to YouTube and this YouTube, any Tom, Dick and Harry, any person who may not like me, they may manipulate my speech, cut paste it and put it onto the YouTube. So that is no evidence that what they see on the YouTube is what I've actually said. Okay. So another statement which actually created quite a havoc in the media was that every Muslim should be a terrorist. That's how it was interpreted by the media. So what do you have to say about that? How do you justify that? This again is out of context. Okay. This is a statement when Muslims are maligned that, that Muslims are terrorists. I say that terrorist means a person who causes terror. And I give the example that if a robber sees a policeman is terrified. So for the robber, the policeman is a terrorist. In this context, Every Muslim should be a terrorist. Whenever a robber sees a Muslim, he should be terrified. Whenever any anti-social element sees a Muslim, he should be terrified. Every Muslim should be a terrorist to the anti-social element. But I further go on to say that I'm aware that terrorist commonly means a person who terrorizes an innocent human being. In this context, no Muslim should ever terrorize any innocent human being. Now this Sunday Times picks up one statement of mine from an answer I've given out of context and says Zakir says every Muslim should be terrorist. I've clearly said that terrorist commonly means a person who terrorizes innocent human being. In this context, no Muslim should terrorize a single innocent human being. And it's very easy. For example, if I'm taking an interview and if I ask you that is Robert a good person? But naturally you will say robber is not a good person. And if I chop off the knot, it will sound that robber is a good person. And if I show you your own interview, you would think it's a slip of the tongue. Actually you say robber is not a good person. But when I chop off the knot, it sounds like robber is a good person. And you would think it's a slip of the tongue. It's not. So doing these things is so easy. So this is exactly what they have done. They have picked up half my sentence and presenting to the world as though I am saying that every Muslim should be a terrorist.